this biofalls gets tossed out. I guarantee, and Chris, it'd be fun for you to show them probably what's causing the leak is this river birch. I almost can guarantee that the roots from that river birch are going through the seal on that biofalls. This enormous river birch right here has roots that are very, very invasive. And just look after we peel back that liner, these are all roots from the river birch. After talking with the customer, they said that prior to us starting this renovation, they were at about $1,200 a month in water bills which is an insane amount of money and you can see what damage those river birch roots are causing this was around one of the skimmers when we pulled the skimmer out the seal was completely gone and all of the fibrous roots these feeder roots had spread between the liner and the skimmer box breaking the seal and causing it to leak it was leaking like a sieve So here is a beautiful pond that we are going to revamp, overhaul, and give a complete new look to. All the granite boulders are coming out and we're gonna be replacing them with aqua blue boulders, which are a very, very cool angular stone. I absolutely love working with. It builds incredible looking ponds and waterfalls, but all the granite's coming out and it will be replaced by all aqua blues. We've got all the bells and whistles on here. We've got wetland filter, we've got spheres, we've got all kinds of crazy cool stuff. Wall stone inside the pond where the patio is gonna come, cantilever out over. You can see the guys are already moving the fish tanks back, which is great because the first thing we gotta do is get this pond draining so that as that's happening, we can go ahead and start covering up this gorgeous bluestone patio. I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful bluestone patio in my life. We will cover all this up, probably with a couple layers of fabric, and then we'll bring those plastic mats in. We're gonna stage all the tanks over there. That way they're out of the way, they're underneath the cover of the spruce tree. Obviously we'll net them, but it will keep them in disguise from predatory birds, that kind of stuff. You can see they already have their pond netted, probably more for the fall leaf drop than anything, but probably a little bit for protection as well. So we are going to demo this entire space and completely recreate it and redesign this pond. First things first, get the equipment unloaded. Our access is going to be from the neighbor's driveway back on the other side of this beautiful gazebo, just an incredible property. These are longtime customers. They're fantastic women and just really, really looking forward to giving them an updated water feature that they can live with the rest of their lives after this unless they decide to go bigger. Super pumped. It's just gonna be a really, really fun project. I've been on this property before and really fell in love with the setting. Just a gorgeous area of one of our treasured western suburbs here in Elmhurst, but just looks great. But I cannot wait to dive into this thing and really give it new life, so. All right. Hey, so Brian made it out this morning. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, there you go, right there, yep. <laughs> I'm ready. All right. <laughs> Out here at Elmhurst, it's a past customer of ours. I think we built this. I actually remember building this pond with Ed and a few other guys. Of course, none of those guys are here anymore. It's a 20 some year old pond. It's actually doing really well. There's nothing really wrong with it. I think it just gets to the point where a customer says, let's do a facelift and why not? Like if you look at their backyard and everything that they've done in this backyard solely because of the water feature, you can see the water feature probably doesn't match all all of the elegance of their backyard right now. And so we're gonna not just give it a new design, but switch out all the rocks. So they're gonna go with that elegant aqua blue boulder that I know you like working with so much, Chris. So we're gonna completely change all that. That means 18 tons of granite boulders have to leave this in order for 20 some tons of aqua blues to come in. We're gonna bring the pond a little bit closer to their existing patio over in here. We're of course gonna take the pond a whole lot deeper. We're gonna take the majority of this pond three feet deep, giving what you can see they're pretty large fish yeah uh, a whole lot more room to swim around and get away from predators and then some of the fun things we're gonna do is come over here you can actually stay right there <laughs> you can just stay right there over in here we're gonna add a group of our three spheres which will be way more visible from inside their kitchen windows so not really replacing the biofalls but this will all come out I'm thinking big sphere here medium small and then still get a little waterfall coming out of here. Underneath those spheres will be a wetland filter to really boost that filtration. The wetland filter we're gonna put in is gonna be equivalent to about eight biofalls or so. What's so funny? Wetland, wetland filter. <laughs> well, that's how they work. <laughs> that was good. 
Um, if you come over on this side, this biofalls gets tossed out, and then we're gonna come over here, put our biofalls in, get it a lot higher, more visible from the gazebo area, from the outdoor living space, and still from inside the house. And almost dropping directly into the pond. So that's it. There's not a whole lot of room to go bigger. We could go out into the yard more, but they like the grass space they have. They like the idea of the pond just being here and deeper. But we've got five, six days, seven, eight, whatever we feel like to uh, give this thing a facelift. We have a lot of obstacles. We have irrigation, we have lighting, we have existing electric, all kinds of stuff. The hardest part though is not just that, it's gonna be getting all of the boulders out of here and all the new boulders in. And thank God they have strong relationships with their neighbors because the only way this can happen is because of their neighbor allowing us to come down their driveway. If we didn't have that, there's no way this could be done. So today's goal, rip it out. Mm -hmm. Think that's possible? Mm -hmm. I think it took us three days to build this pond originally. Granite boulders go pretty fast, especially hand-sized granite boulders when you're not using machines. Go pretty fast. You can also see our deep spot is pretty small comparable to what we usually do. I think we'll get most of this out today, probably finish up demolition tomorrow and uh, start excavation tomorrow. Yeah. Good. Excellent. Well, that's my cue to get out of here. Mm. I'm doing some stuff over in the sandbox with Ed, which you guys can follow along later. Huh? Hmm? Uh, uh, okay, bye. <laughs> Wetland. Wetland. Built there. All right, so we are like moving right along. Corey, Luis, Jack are doing a fantastic job pulling out all the cobbles out of the pond. Again, all the granite is coming out. Right now we are loading the wheelbarrows and then the wheelbarrows are going into the dingo which we have over there and then Jack is loading up the dump trailer. Once we get this full, we'll take it out to the street, drop it, and then we'll pull the truck back and then we'll finish loading up the truck with the rest of the granite. So really cruising along. I think it's probably about lunchtime. Jack looks a little hungry. What'd you bring for lunch today? Sandwich? Yeah. What kind of sandwich? I think it, I forgot. I was too tired last night. I think a turkey sandwich. Did you make it or did your mommy make it? Oh, it's probably good. Anyways, Jack brought a turkey sandwich. I'm sure Corey brought his rice and chicken. <laughs> and at least meatballs. Oh man, that's awesome. I went to a, an Italian restaurant the other night and the meatballs were literally the size of these cobbles. <laughs> one plate, one meatball. Anyways, so I'll cruise right along, making really good progress. We're gonna work up until lunchtime and then we'll get the rest of the pond demoed. Looking great, guys. Demo is still well underway. You can see now we are getting a lot of the rock and gravel out of here. One thing I wanted to take a second and show you guys is this enormous river birch right here has roots that are very, very invasive. And just look after we peel back that liner, these are all roots from the river birch. After talking with the customer, they said that prior to us starting this renovation, they were at about $1,200 a month in water bills, which is an insane amount of money. And you can see what damage those river birch roots are causing. This was around one of the skimmers. When we pulled this skimmer out, the seal was completely gone and all of the fibrous roots, these feeder roots, had spread between the liner and the skimmer box, breaking the seal and causing it to leak. It was leaking like a sieve at this skimmer, at that skimmer, at that bio falls. You can see the root system. This is all along the soil and just how these roots kind of crawl back up in here. You can see all that so the seal on everything these are all river birch roots down in here completely yeah look at that I mean, that's just so what it happens is, is it breaks that silicone seal where the liner attaches to the components causing all of them to leak so just know your plants know the characteristics of them and which ones to and which ones to not plant in proximity to your water features now unfortunately we didn't win the battle of getting rid of this river bird so we're going to do some things to help we've chosen to do some things design wise that will help prevent a lot of that stuff from happening but unfortunately the river birch is here they chose to keep it much to kind of our 
behest, I guess. But our advice was to get rid of it. They chose to keep it, which is fine. It's not ideal, but it is fine. But we are going to do a couple things and I'll show you later on in the video what we are doing to combat or take into account the root system of those river birches. But again, just know the plants that you are choosing to plant around your water feature and potentially what some of those root structures can do below ground. I know deciduous trees, a lot of fruiting trees, that kind of stuff, they have the wind blown debris, which can be a maintenance concern, but you have to take into account some of the things that are happening underground, i.e. the root structures. And I hope you guys kind of saw what kind of damage can happen because of that stuff. So just a quick little tidbit there. Enjoy the rest of the video. Rock, liner, crappy gravel, out. Jack, I think we hit a good milestone today. Corey, how did Jack do? Jack pulled his weight. It's just insane a lot, but he pulled his weight. Yeah, well that's good. All right, so we've got everything out of here. Now we have to go back to our shop and palletize about 24 tons of aqua blues. Well, at least 18, probably 24 tons of aqua blues and get those ready to ship over here because we are running all the rock from our shop, which usually it gets delivered by Illinois Brick, one of our stone suppliers. And you've seen them in our videos before where they come and bring it into Moffitt. It's all nice and palletized. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. We had to source the stone directly from Kukowski Stone up north of us about a couple, about two hours uh, up in Wisconsin, but it's some huge aqua blue uh, pieces, super exciting to work with them they look great so we're just going to kind of clean up get out of here for the day and then tomorrow we will shape the pond get it dug get our fabric and liner in, and start rocking so really really good progress all right cool